They gather for an annual event, by no coincidence, on election day. Because here you feel you're not bound by partisanship, but on the same team. The idea to shine light on lives that have been changed for different reasons, but for the better. Well, I almost died, to be blunt, you know. Um, cut my jugular vein, escaped, accidental, of course. Uh, almost bled out on the ice, but I prepared for death in every way. I called for the team chaplain, I told the trainer, call my mom, tell her I love her. And I don't think PTSD was a set of words back then, or initials. Clint Malarchuk almost lost his life in 1989, playing goalie for Buffalo. A skate inadvertently cut his jugular. He came back just 10 days later, but he was not healed or healthy. He was in crisis, and he did not know it. You know, one day I went behind my barn and shot myself and survived that, and that's how I got help because I went for treatment. I had to get all this work done on me, and I wasn't buying the PTSD thing, but uh, they said, no, you got PTSD. And I didn't know what the heck was going on in my life, in my head, and uh, that's a picture an x-ray of where the bullet is in my head, even today. And I, I, I always get a little emotional with this. Um, it's, it's just, it was horrific It what happened to us. He came back slowly with the help of his wife. So I think for me, that was the first time where I thought, it is a disease and it's not him personally picking on me, it's just what they say. So with you getting better and me working on my stuff, we were able to work things out. And he learned that you do not cure something so profound. You deal with something so profound. And that is a victory. And I always thought my purpose, uh, the one quote there, that you figure out why you were born. And I always thought I was born to be an NHL goalie and then got the coach in the NHL. No, that's just given me a platform to be up here. My purpose, our purpose, is to be up here and help people by telling our story that it, there's hope and keep the faith and heal because it's, it's all possible. I hate to be uh, blunt, but uh, really, I, I don't think you ever get over it. And that's kind of what I have learned. But I use that term, struggle well. So when we're having our insomnias or uh, flashbacks or whatever, we got tools that we've learned. So we struggle well, A bad day, we make it, we make it better. Kirk Calland is a pastor at Mount Olivet Church in Minneapolis, but 39 years ago, he was a long way from finding peace, controlled by drugs and alcohol. I think it was, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, it got so bad that um, I know I have an allergic reaction to alcohol. I start drinking, I break out in handcuffs in an orange jumpsuit, yeah. right? And it's like, I don't know what's growing on, but the cops are climbing out of my trunk. I have a disease called alcoholism that wants to kill me and everyone around me. I don't understand my disease. I don't completely understand how come I'm so alive and sober today, but I am deathly afraid of my disease. He tried to beat it with an outpatient program, and he lost. So I do the outpatient deal, and so I'm still using it in treatment, because I have a problem, but can't you fix it for me? Right? Um, get to the point where my girlfriend turns me in uh, to my counselor and well there's a person God used to save Kurt's life. So my addiction gets worse and worse and worse and worse. I would only drink on certain days, only uh, if it was uh, light or dark out, if I was alone or with someone, or groups of one or more and only on days that ended in Y. My addiction got so bad that I was loving things and using people. My major character defects are selfishness, self-centeredness, dishonesty, and fear. Alcoholics and drug addicts, we are egomaniacs with inferiority complexes. We blame others. We think we're the victim. But one Easter Sunday service, as he sat in church, his future boss, Paul Youngdahl, would change his life. And he grabs my arms and says, Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for you too. And walks away. And I've heard that since I was this big. And for some reason it was one of those 
Oh, yeah. Jay Taylor played hockey at the University of Minnesota and into the minor leagues, and he had a defined role. You know, my career, I think, was uh, was a great kind of testing ground for life after hockey from that standpoint of just, like, overcoming injuries and having to deal with a lot of different things on and off the ice, personally, professionally, and, um, you know, kind of always having that attitude of if you just keep moving and keep, and keep pushing forward, someday something will happen. And then he was out of hockey, searching. When he changed, choosing a faith over the world. Everything that I did was, was driven on ego and was driven on what other people thought of me. So even though I was courageous, maybe physically, to the outward uh, appearance, internally and of what I was telling myself was very cowardly. I uh, never wanted to, to show people who I really was. I never wanted to express myself. I just kind of wanted to fit in. I wanted people to think that, uh, you know, I was what they wanted me to be. I was kind of a protector in what I did. Uh, stood up for my teammates, fought a lot. So I always thought of courage as more of a physical, like I'm willing to answer the bell or willing to step up for the people around me that maybe can't. Where now, as a dad and a husband and uh, almost 40, I think my definition of it's changed a little bit from more of the concept of, of it's coming from a place of love. He is now a hockey coach at Lakeville North High School with a different perspective than when he played the game because he is a different person. We have kind of these three main principles. If we have a hard, a good work ethic, if we're accountable, and if we have respect for ourselves and everybody else, if we stay focused on those three things, you know, we at least put ourselves in a position to be successful. So um, I think that's the greatest part about sport is you can't really bluff it. What I found in the last five years of my life is that love is actually uh, true courage and it's, it's something that uh, takes a lot uh, to do and to do with all of your heart. Jake Taylor feels blessed and he feels a purpose. He has accepted his assignment on this earth because he knows what it is. We don't have to be fearful of this world and all this stuff going on around us and you know whatever it is if we have that if we have that Christ focused mindset we can move into a place of love and make good decisions and, and actually be courageous men. Remember that we all have the ability to rise above and make a difference. On this day is the creation of a man who does not want recognition for it. Chip Annabeck just believes that we were put here to do more than succeed in business. That if you are blessed, then you have an obligation to pay it back, to pay it forward. In some way, that matters and is authentic and it has impact. They know it well at his alma mater. He's a, uh, he absolutely creates opportunities for anyone and everyone around him. And it's just been amazing. I mean, not only to see what he's pre he really created at UND, but everything he touches. It's just been an amazing thing. This is, whether it's uh, you know the new facilities in South Minneapolis, right near the Veterans Administration Hospital, their facilities every third Saturday. Um, he's a special, special individual. And we're proud to have him as an alum. Part of the mission on this day and every day is to help what is titled The Ranch. It is in Sauk Center, Minnesota, a project aided by the late Mark Pavlich, where hockey players can seek mental health help and not feel alone. It's going well. Uh, it was two summers ago when we had our first fundraiser for it up in by Wabak there at the Golf Center. We were hoping to raise 30 grand. We thought it'd be a success if we did. We raised 110. But at that, at that event, Melanie Butler, the angel uh, from uh, the Eagles Healing Nest, came up and she gave us a building. What happens when you know the end, you're fearless. You're actually fearless. And, and I happen to know how the end takes place. So that gives me courage to speak and to, to live my life. But it always wasn't like that, not at all. The showstopper on this day is a former hockey player who understands struggles. Bill Butters played in the NHL. But in 1980, he was just cut, went to a Fellowship of Christian Athletes hockey camp, and a group of 12-year-old campers changed his life. And then all those kids stood up, and they sang in perfect pitch. Oh, how we love Jesus. Oh, how we love Jesus. Oh, how we love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And uh, I don't know. Something happened in my heart. He learned a hockey metaphor that he has used for more than four decades. Do you know that you have a heavenly father? 
that loved you so much. And my dad left my family when I was four, and I didn't even have an earthly father. He goes, you know you have a heavenly father that loves you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, the all-star of all-stars, the best player to the penalty box for you, that you could stay in the game. But I didn't know how to cherish. I didn't know how to honor. I didn't know how to serve my wife. I didn't know any of that stuff. The concept of faith, hope, and courage is to provide a shot of optimism, of believing in something good. And on these days, you are allowed to leave whatever is your cross to bear in life and be reaffirmed that there is good in the world. For Bill Butters, he needed some 12-year-old boys to point him in a new direction. And when you live in a double life and you're a liar, you never have peace. And these boys, like my whole life was laid bare in front of these kids. And then, then the little boy prayed this prayer. Lord, I pray that Coach Butters could know Jesus as his Lord and Savior tonight. And for the first time in my life, I was on my knees. I'd never been in that position before. And tears were streaming down my face. And all those boys came and put their hands on me. And they led me in a prayer to ask God to forgive my sins and invite Christ in my life. Because on this day, everyone is reminded that the two most important days in your life are when you are born and the day you figure out why you were born. The biggest courage that we can do for one another is to serve one another, to love one another. And this word, how about this word? Forgive one another.